this video continues from the first uh, video where we talked about the materials that are used in building a foundation. So in this video, we kind of want to talk about where we get started in the construction process. Now, there is a lot of work that's done before this, but we're going to start here for the sake of understanding what it is that you're going to be drawing. So in this image, you can see a house in the background for size comparison. And you can see the, the vehicles digging. And we call that excavation. And in this case, because they are digging so deep, it's safe to assume that they're going to be putting in a basement. Um, that looks, it's got, it's red clay. And red clay is very common to Georgia and it compacts very, very well. And so there's probably not a lot of need for them to do anything beyond standard footings. And so what what's happens, right? We were, they remove the grass and they bring in the equipment and they just start digging. And one of the things, once we get to talking about site design in a future course, is you try to balance out the site as best you can with anything, any dirt you excavate, you wanna see if you can use it somewhere else on the site. Um, because taking away dirt is very expensive and bringing in dirt is even more expensive. So as much as possible, we want to avoid uh, the dirt leaving or coming into the site. And you can see, uh, based on this photo, that they are, once they're, they're digging, they're putting it on the back, on the right side, on the back of the, the lot, and the lo lot slopes. And so what they'll be able to do is once they put the dirt down, because it's that that deep red clay it compacts really well. They'll be able to level that out and then not exp have the expense. But if you do have to take dirt off of a site, they bring in dump trucks and then they just scoop it into the dump truck and the dump truck takes it somewhere else. Um, usually somewhere else where somebody needs dirt. So it kind of becomes this exchange thing. So they're now excavating the site and it looks like they're gonna put in a foundation. Now, in this image, you see these are just footings. There's no basement going in. They're just putting the, the footings. There's probably going to be a, a small foundational wall, um, and this is likely going to be a crawl space situation. Um, yeah, there's no, there's no depth to this. So that was, those are the difference. That's how you can tell that this one is basement, and then this one is just footing on the ground with probably a crawl space. Now, the difference between the two is the, the height of the foundation wall. And with foundation walls, you can pour them from concrete or you can build them out of concrete block. Um, we used to use stone, but that's a very slow, therefore expensive process now. Um, you can use brick. It's called a double wythe, W-Y-T-H-E, where you can put two um, rows of brick next to each other and that can act as a foundation, but brick is also more expensive than concrete. So most, most use either poured or concrete block. And that is a local thing. In some parts of the country, like California, it is cheaper to, to pour concrete. And in parts like Georgia, it is cheaper to build concrete block foundation walls. So it's just sort of a local localized thing, and it depends on the, the availability materials. In Georgia, it used to be, um, things have changed here, it used to be very cheap to build a house here because we had all the natural resources. Um, we've just had an influx um, of people moving into the area, which has driven up demand, therefore cost. Um, okay, so once we've dug, excavated out our site, we then come in and lay out, or not we, but the contractor, um, unless you're the contractor, comes in and lays out where the concrete is going to be poured with wood bars, uh, wood, wood, excuse me, wood boards. I've got the wood boards and bars in front of me and I picked the wrong one to say. Um, they're called batten boards and they're wood and they're just used as, as frames, as forming. And what you see inside there is called rebar. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually sitting on another piece of wire that is keeping it off the ground. And I'll show that. I'll point that out to you guys when I, we talk about, we look at the drawings. Okay, so what happens is this. We 
we have concrete that is superb in compression strength because we're going to put all this weight on top of it. But where it doesn't do well is tensile strength. So if the ground underneath it um, gets frozen and pushes up, it will crack. Now, that's not bad. When you see cracked concrete, people think, uh-oh. Um, and it, if it's a few cracks here and there, it just simply means that the rebar is now doing its job. Now, where it becomes problematic, though, is when it starts to crack and fall apart. As long as the concrete relatively stays in one piece, some cracks are not actually bad. It's just an indication that, that the tensile strength has happened and um, or the tensile pressure has happened and the rebar is now carrying that weight. And the rebar is made out of steel. Steel is excellent for tensile strength. And so that's why we put um, these reinforcement bars, which are known as rebar, into our foundations. And so you can see there's two bars there, they're probably number threes, um, and they run the full length of the foundation. And so what's gonna happen now? So it's been excavated, the foundations have been laid out, the footings, excuse me, have been laid out, and the rebar has been laid. And the next thing that will happen is the concrete truck will come in and they will pour the concrete into these um, forms and then they will let it cure. And when it has finished curing, um, or at least when it's formed enough, they can pull away the boards and those boards will be removed. Um, sometimes people leave them, but I would recommend removing them because it's just more wood for termites. Um, termites often come into houses because people keep their yards too neat and they're tunneling underground looking for wood to eat because usually they they tunnel around and they find a, a dead tree and they climb up the roots and they eat the the trunk the what's left of the dead tree right and often we clear off everything so that they start coming into houses and that will attract them so i i encourage you to um if you're visiting the site um and that gets into the construction phase, um, have those boards removed. So, so you don't want to do anything to attract uh, termites to the site. But I have heard of people just leaving them. But they should be removed. And so once those are removed, um, dirt starts to get backfilled around that. And then the foundation on top, I'm sorry, then the foundation wall can get built on top of the footing. Okay, so we've, we're gonna build these footings and they look like this. Um, actually, I've got two photos. They can look like this and they can look like this. <laughs> and the labor that went into that is just incredible. This is for a basement. I mean, the, you can see they did such a beautiful job with that formwork. It's pristine. Um, but it takes more time to do that and it gets covered up. And so that, I don't know. It looks like it's sloping, but it could just be the image. Because sometimes when you take a picture standing here, it makes it, it looks like it's sloping to me right there. And it looks like a big chunk of it's missing. Um, and that one's a much sloppier um, pour than this one. But that's what it looks like. After you've taken away the batten boards, what's left is the footing. And that's what the footing looks like. However, when you draw it, you're going to draw this nice rectangle. Um, and the contractor will know that they're not going to build that beautiful rectangle. It, it's still, of course, that contractor did. <laughs> that contractor built that rectangle. Um, There's still foundations. So that, but that's what it looks like after it's poured and cured and the boards have been removed. Okay. And then the next thing that we're going to get into after we've poured our foundations, and you see there's rebar that is coming up through the foundation to help hold the um, foundation wall in place. They are either going to pour that or they are going to, they're going to pour that. It's too much rebar to put block around. So they're going to pour those. And that's why the, well, they've got all that, all that rebar coming up to where the when they go to pour that foundation wall for the basement it has rebar in the wall as well um, a pier this is a pier a pier is when you have a platform that is inside the perimeter 
So this is these, um, oh, I don't know if you can see my cursor. Okay, so the, the, the two big and the two small rectangles or squares in the middle, they're not complete squares, but um, that have rebar coming out of them, there's four of them, they have, um, those are piers. Okay, and then here we go. This is a poured foundation wall. They then used framing um, out of wood, just like we did with the foundation. And you can now see down here the foundation and how the wall is offset. So we basically center the foundation wall on the footing. And so that, that weight gets carried straight down and disperses into the soil. And this will all get backfilled with dirt. That's another reason you don't want to immediately, anything that you've excavated, you don't want to immediately take it off your site um, if you can help it, because you're going to need that dirt to backfill. This becomes really problematic in small spaces. If you're building somewhere really small, um, where to put that dirt becomes it can be a problem. And they may have to take it out and bring it back. Um, and then there's a whole lot of solutions for that, but that starts getting into the contractor's realm. It's not ours. Here it is with, um, built with concrete block instead. And so then the next thing we're going to do is put up a vapor barrier on the outside. And before we put in dirt, we're putting in gravel and this helps with the drainage. So that vapor barrier um, helps keep the foundation wall from getting wet. There's another way to do vapor prevention. It's called, um, uh, 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 sorry, it's asphalt. <laughs> it's asphaltic uh, vapor barrier. And so they just put this hot application of hot tar on the side of the building and it helps uh, make it water resistant because you know we're trying to keep water out of the basement and then on after that we then add and that you can see it here here's the they used asphalt here and then you can see on the bottom the dark spot on the bottom is asphalt and then you can see where they've begun to put boards insulation boards on top of that so now we're keeping the water out and we're keeping the cold out. And this will help ensure as much as possible that our basement stays dry. And then on top of that, we then also add a perimeter drain system. And you can see there's a pipe with holes on it and surrounded by gravel. And all that helps to, when, when it rains, it helps to get the rain inside the pipe so it doesn't sit up against the foundation. And then we come along and we do start to do our backfill, as you can see right there, up against the insulation. There's gravel below that, but then we put dirt. And eventually that's where you know, you'll plant your shrubs and your, and your grass and so forth. Okay, we're going to stop here and continue in the next video.